This is video number two for Word Module 1 in the Shelley Cashman book on Microsoft Office 365. So at the bottom of page 1-15, he explains a little bit about some of the features of spelling and grammar checking in Word. And the first typing is on the top of page 1-16. So we're going to type in some text. We're going to make some deliberate errors in it so we can see what Word does when we make mistakes. So let's go right here. And I will type in the data. Okay, so this is what we were asked to type in. This is a mistake. We've got the double blue line. This is a mistake. We've got the dotted purple line. Uh, it's not gold like he says it should be. And then we've got a red wavy line down here for the duplicate word. But up here, this is supposed to be a misspelled word. And apparently, Word thinks that it is not misspelled. Uh, if we right click on it and go to search here, uh, it will open up a search window over on the right side, and it tells us that apparently that actually is a word. It's not very commonly used, but it also gives us an option here for possible replacement. And if we click on the plus sign over here next to it, it will insert clean instead of clan. However, for whatever reason, it also puts in a paragraph mark. It basically hits the enter key after the word clean. We don't want that. So we're going to get rid of it. We need to position the cursor to the left of the paragraph mark and then hit the delete key, not the backspace key. The backspace key would delete the N. I want to delete the paragraph mark, so I'm going to hit delete now. And now the text looks like it's supposed to. So the next line appears to be OK. The line after that has the word for, and it has a double uh, blue line underneath it, indicating that this may be a usage or grammar problem uh, let's right click on that and it says grammar and possible word choice error and it should be four and go ahead and click on four and it will replace it correctly for us the next error is this all or sorry off of and if we right click on that it says this is a conciseness thing and more concise language would be clearer for your reader it recommends just using the word off instead of off of, and that probably makes sense. So go ahead and click on off. Then down at the bottom, we got one final red wavy underline. We've got the word or appearing twice here. Let's right click on the second or. It calls this spelling. I don't know if that's spelling or not, but um, let's go ahead and delete the repeated word. And now our document looks the way his does in the textbook. There are some options here. Uh, review up here on our ribbon has a spelling and grammar option over here and we can tell it to check just spelling or we can tell it to check both spelling and grammar we can also go to our file tab over here and down here under options one of the options is proofing and that's basically our spelling and grammar the spelling and grammar stuff is down here there's some autocorrect stuff up here that's kind of cool but what we're concerned about is from here on down so you probably want these first uh, four items turned on all of the time and it will flag mistakes for you uh, sometimes the grammar things it flags are not necessarily mistakes and you can use your own judgment on that you don't always have to follow words recommendations but i recommend keeping these on all of the time as you type you'll probably end up with better documents if you do okay let's click on okay okay now we're on page 1-18 i forgot to hit the end key to move to the end of the line. I can either just click at the end or I can hit the end key on the keyboard and move to the end of the line. Then uh, we're down at the bottom of page 1-18 now. We want to insert a blank line and inserting a blank line is simply a matter of hitting the enter key. A blank line just shows a paragraph mark on the line by itself and the insertion point is right here it looks like in the textbook in figure 1-28 the insertion point is down here on the next line so if we want a blank line in there this will be our blank line and then down here we are going to insert the next text okay i've typed in the next text that was shown on page 1-19 now we're going to flip over to page 1-20 so on page 1-20, we're looking at some options for navigating a document. 
you can move around easily with the keyboard in addition to moving around by using the mouse and clicking. So let's go to the beginning of this after eating line here. Uh, the right arrow key moves you one character to the right. The left arrow key moves you one character to the left. The down arrow key moves you down one line. The up arrow key moves you up one line. And if I want to speed this up, I can hold the control key down, hit the right arrow, and every time I do, it advances one word. Although when there's punctuation, like there was after the words eating, coughing, and sneezing, uh, it takes me two key presses to get to where I want to go. And control on the left arrow, which is what I'm going to do now, takes you back one word at a time. You can also use the end key which i'm going to press right now will take you to the end of a line and the home key which i'm going to press now will take you back to the beginning of a line so you can quickly move to the end or the beginning of a line using home and end you can also use the mouse let's close this editor window over here and close the search window over here and you can i'm going to just use the mouse wheel to scroll up use the mouse wheel to scroll down and you can also use the mouse to if we have more text here and we've got vertical scroll bars, we can use the scroll bars to move up and down as well. So let's go to the top of page 121. We're going to save a document for the first time. We're going to go to our File tab. And the option we want is uh, Save As. Let's click on Save As. And it gives us some choices about where we want to put it. I'm just going to put it on my desktop here. I'm going to click on Browse going to go to my desktop and the suggested name is wash your hands but the name that the author wants us to use is sc i assume for shelly cashman underscore wd for word underscore one for module one underscore wash hands flyer on format it will automatically put the DOCX on the end of the file name for you. That's called the file extension. Go ahead and click on the Save button. And it'll save your document and it'll return you back into the editor. And you may get an additional tip up here. If you do, just click on Got It and it will go away. Now we're on the bottom of page 1-23, formatting paragraphs and characters, and let's flip over to the next page. And it talks a little bit about fonts and font sizes and themes. And then at the bottom of page 125, it talks about how to change a document theme. So a theme is just a collection of fonts and colors and formatting information that you can apply to your entire document. So you can very quickly, by changing the theme, you can change the look of your entire document. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the top of page 126. We're going to do Control Home to move to the top of our document. So we should be to the left of the sentence that says, Wash Your Hands. And we want to go to the Design tab up here on the ribbon. And on the far left side, we've got a bunch of themes. If you click on the down arrow here, it'll show you a little preview of the themes. It's kind of hard to get a feel for them just by looking at these thumbnails. But you can hover your mouse over them and they will automatically be applied. So you can get a live preview here as you move the mouse over them. Most of the text, I think the text is always black. Uh, what changes here is the font. So you can see some font differences here as I pause the mouse. Some of the colors will change, but those are for things like headings. We don't have any headings in here right now, so that's not really going to make any difference. So we're on number two on page 126. It says scroll to and then point to slate in the themes gallery to display a live preview. So slate is, it'd be cool if these were alphabetical. So here's slate and it says point to various themes to see a live preview. We've already done that. Click slate in the themes gallery to change the document theme. So I click on that. And now we have a different font here. If I click on the font and go to Home tab, uh, I've got the Callisto MT font, whereas before I think I had the Calibri font. So now we're going to move on to uh, some paragraph formatting commands. Uh, we want to center a paragraph. So we want to click Home on the Home tab, which uh, we have already done. 
click somewhere in the paragraph to be centered in this case the headline so that's this paragraph right here then we want to go to our horizontal centering button up here so this is how you format paragraphs you can left align the text in the paragraph you can center it you can right align it or you can justify it we want to center it so we're going to click on center here and notice that control e is the keyboard shortcut so we could also type control e for that and an easy way to remember that is uh it's you might expect to be control c but control c is the copy command so we have to use something different for that control e if you want something centered it will have equal margins on both the left and the right side so that's kind of an easy way to remember control e for center so i click on that and it gets centered precisely between the left and the right margins of my document now let's go to page 1-28 we're going to center another paragraph so we're going to click in the washing your hands paragraph here we're going to click on center we're going to center that one as well now we're in the middle of page 1-28 and it tells us how to select a line here if you want to select just one line what you do is you move your cursor over to the left far enough so that it turns into an arrow pointing to the right uh, to about one o'clock click on that and it will select the line i can do that on any line here and if i happen to want to select more than that i can double click it'll select the paragraph for me if i want to select multiple paragraphs i can just go to the left margin here get my arrow pointing to one o'clock and then just click and drag through as many lines as i want to select now we're on the bottom of page 1-29 changing the font size of selected text so with wash your hands selected let's go back up here and select wash your hands we want to go to the home tab and we want to go to the font group and this is the font size button if we click on the down arrow here it will give us a bunch of choices if we don't want one of the choices that's here we can always type on top of the number that's up there highlighted in gray we want 36 points a point is 1 72nd of an inch so this should give us text that's about half an inch tall so choose 36 click on it and our text should be much bigger this should match the text at the top of page 1-30 now we're on the middle or the bottom of page 1-30 to change the font of selected text so this is the font name up in this box here if we click on the down arrow we can also get a live preview so it looks like the one we have right now is called callisto mt and we are looking for rockwell extra bold now this is kind of cool as you move your mouse through these options here you will get a live preview there might be a little delay sometimes if you move your mouse too fast you're not going to get all of them but it will do a live preview for you we want rockwell you can take the mouse here and these are in alphabetical order fortunately so uh, we want rockwell extra bold so when you get to rockwell extra bold go ahead and click on that and i'm going to get some really bold text there for our title now we're at the bottom of page 1-31 we want to change the case of selected text so we're still going to keep this text selected we are going to the home tab we're going to the font group we have some options here for changing the case sentence case will capitalize the first letter lowercase will turn everything to lowercase uppercase will turn every character to uppercase capitalize each word is an option and uh, toggle the case in case you had everything backwards and just want to flip lowercase to uppercase and lower and uppercase to lowercase what we want is we want this to be all in caps we're going to choose uppercase and there we have it now we're at the bottom of page 1-32 to apply a preset text effect to selected text so we still want the title selected we are going to click text effects and typography button on the home tab in the font group and the option that we want is in the second row the next to last item here it's labeled uh, fill white outline brown accent color one glow brown accent color one go ahead and click on that and this should match the text now at the bottom of page 1-32 so there's some other options that they encourage you to experiment with at the top of page 1-33 and we want to click any place else in the document just to remove the selection so now let's go to the bottom of page 1-33 we want to shade a paragraph here so we want to click inside title paragraph we don't need to select the entire paragraph here because this is going to be a paragraph command paragraphs command always apply to the entire paragraph we're going to go up here to our shading button 
click on the down arrow and we are going to do some fill colors for the background here got a bunch to choose from here and the one that we want is we want brown accent for darker 25 percent it's the fifth row two three four five and it is the eighth item over one two three four five six seven eight okay so that should match the text at the top of page 134 and we've been going for a while now so i think we'll stop here and we'll continue at the bottom of page 1-34 with the rest of module one